Good morning, afternoon, evening, guys. Uh, talk and drive without driving, pretty much. So you're being misled. Um, at some point, some weeks or uh, months ago, actually, Empty Box uh, had a good question uh, in one of the comments. How do you go about calculating the force required and how does power steering factor into that? Obviously not an issue here, but I've never understood how you know other than good guesses. Great video, uh, take my money, uh, have my daughter, that sort of... Okay, yeah, uh, thanks a lot, good question. And I replied that I would go into that at some point, but I haven't done so. Uh, but today that'll change. Look at the steering forces on the steering wheel in a Formula V12 from Riser Studios that that's coming up. Uh, which means uh, one thing, we won't look at uh, power steering because that can change anything in any amount. So I'll uh, look at an unassisted steering rack, see how we can get with a bit of tire data and some of the physics of the, the car and some calculation if we can calculate the steering force in a couple of situations. So here we go. Bye bye. Yes. This is a little scan from the book Race Car Vehicle Dynamics. Uh, Formula 1 front tire from the era from the V12 basically. The 90s probably, I don't know exactly, but it's good enough as an example. Giving us the tire lateral force, basically the cornering grip of the front tire versus the slip angle. And you can see that at about 4 5 degrees it's sort of maxed out. So that's where you have to be. Uh, to get generate the maximum g-force and this one here at the bottom is the self-aligning torque which is important to calculate the steering uh, feedback the, the, the steering torque and they are different in shape uh, as you can see the self-aligning torque has a clear peak somewhere pretty low and then it drops off so by the point you're at your optimum slip angle here at 5 degrees your self-aligning torque is already quite a bit lower and we will see that it has an influence on uh, the, the steering forces um, where does this come from? Where, what is this self-aligning torque magic? well looking at the suspension here and the tire of the car this is a side view and here the tire hits the ground at zero and you would argue, well, this is the tire and then this, the, the, the cornering force applies right here at the middle of the tire, right below the axle, basically. However, it doesn't. Self-aligning torque is the result of the force, the cornering force, applying a little distance behind the center line. And that distance uh, gets smaller as slip angle increases. So this, this uh, self-aligning torque is nothing more than the lateral force multiplied by a little trail distance and that's some magic tire distance somewhere between the zero and perhaps five centimeters behind this so um, another part in the steering feel is what is sometimes called a caster trail suspension trail mechanical trail that's if you continue the line from the upper ball joint here on the on the upright to the lower ball joint and continue that line to the ground as I've done here dotted line it hits the ground a little bit in front of the center line here zero and that's basically the shopping cart uh, wheels if they're not uh, damaged from some uh, spring break parking lot activities uh, if they function normally, you notice that when you push the shopping cart, then uh, the, the, the wheels always trail the little pivot. So basically, this creates stability and uh, is also a factor because if you were to apply a tire grip force right here at zero, but this continuation of this line is a bit in front, it would actually turn the front tires and, and, and turn the steering wheel. So this creates uh, steering effort for the driver. So two things we have to look at is this little trail here and also the 
self-aligning torque which basically adds another trail in the tire magic basically so um, interested in two things maximum g-force so i want to be at optimum slip angle and i also also would like to be somewhere around this peak at about one and a half two degrees uh, to see if what this does for the steering forces and to do that i'm gonna drag something into play i'm recording this at just three frames per second so it looks quite horrible i'll do a test run on a flat skid pad with uh, five degrees steering lock which more or less creates four or five degrees slip angle on the front tires it uh, depends if they yaw i don't know slight differences probably but more or less so that gives us uh, an idea of the tire loads which is what i need at a high g corner i've turned off the sound otherwise uh, it would be very loud let's do it in fourth gear three frames per second bliss and then hit the steering now i have i'm applying five degree steering and the tire loads will be visible in the telemetry and in order to get a picture of the of the peak aligning torque i'm gonna use one and a half degrees i think this is more or less all right this all this exercise here today isn't exact it just gives you an idea and how to go about doing this so again in up to fourth gear and then apply the steering one and a half degrees this will give us tire loads which which we can calculate a bunch of stuff okay Okay, thanks very much. So, um, switching to something I prepared earlier the Steering Hulk Omatic and some handy features here. So, what are the loads? Have to drag these into play. open file um, the first one was the maximum G okay so these are the tire loads and I want the front tire so front left and front right and I'm pulling the maximum G here so the maximum G force the tire loads front left I'm gonna copy it oh yeah scroll lock is on I think why I don't know. And the front right, 4470. Now I have to figure out what is the self aligning torque. I have to look these values up in the tire curves. So uh, I need Mr. Google for that, or in fact, let's just do it the other way. Newton to LBS. So, uh, 4470, I know by heart that divided by 4. Uh, normally when you accept Excel, it does wrong things. This is correct. And foot pounds. Oh, those Imperial units, they get on your breasts. Neutron meter to foot pounds I think that's divided by 1.36 that's just units for you so if this is 204 yes that's correct okay sorry for that um, what tire loads 1 on 6 8 to 60 something okay we have tire loads here 400 600 800 and thousands so the inside tire isn't the most important most of the time it's lightly loaded and we loaded that to uh, just under 300 and the data is for 400 so it'll be a, it'll be lower so at the maximum g-force at about five degrees at 400 pounds we get some we six something but I'm lower so let's estimate 500 pounds of uh, lateral force 500 pound that gives us 2224 lateral force then the other uh, tire load 4470 that's convenient because that's 
1000 and that's exactly a fit of the upper line and there we are right in between 1250 and 1500 uh, 250, 125, so that's 1375. So the lateral force is 6116 Newton. Self aligning torque at 5 degrees and at 1000 pounds is right here in between 87 and a half. It's a little about 88. Let's make it 88. Foot pounds is 120. Newton meters and on the lightly loaded tire at 5 degrees it's it's probably a little negative value but very near zero so let's go to that mechanical trail oh yeah I didn't mention that but we have a trail here this little distance between zero and where this line hits the ground it's point zero two two in the calculation thank you very much meters Okay, that is excellent. So uh, now we can calculate the sort of mechanical torque because that's the lateral force times the distance times the trail. Giving us a, a torque again, Newton meters. So that means the total torque is the mechanical torque plus the self aligning torque drag that to this side okay newton meters again so what I've done now is look at the lateral force the grip levels basically times the little trail that gets the, the mechanical trail gives us that part and then add it up to the self-aligning torque which I've looked up here so the total torque is 254 plus that so that's uh, just over 300 now let's assume a steering ratio of 14 to 1 that's quite possible uh, it's not the fastest track uh, it could be like 12 and a half and that's just uh, basically the steering ratio is how many degrees you have to turn your steering wheel before the front tires turn one degree the loaded tire uh, 12 and a half is fine uh, yeah so that gives us, us a steering torque of 24 point something newton meters or about 18 foot pounds okay now that's uh, the maximum g-force done now looking at the self lining torque uh, where that is maximum so at the lower angle back to my telemetry load the other one and get slightly different tire loads so the front left is six. Uh, let's be exact. 1590, 1495. Okay. And what is that again with the? So that that's this time the low load is closer to 400. So we can more or less use the low the lowest lines here. So as far as self-aligning torque goes, at 2 degrees-ish where we are, it's close to 25, let's make that 22, 22 foot-pounds is, let's say, 30 newton meters. And at the load of 40.95 it's about 9.20 so we are a little bit below with in between the upper two lines basically so uh, a little bit above the half so about 125 125 foot pounds is 170 newton meters the lateral force is at two degrees where we are looking that's about mm, 50. It's it's just eh, 550. So this is a 150. So halfway is 625, 
Yeah, it's about 600 pounds again. 600 pounds gives us a lateral force of 2669. And at somewhere between these two, we're very close to a thousand pounds, just a bit below. Let's make it 950. Gives us 4225. That's the same. So the mechanical torque plus the trail times the lateral force. Torque is in newton meters, and the total torque is mechanical torque plus self aligning torque 88. And that in newton meters. Hello, are we still awake? Finally completed this now. So we have calculated two situations. The first one, maximum cornering G. The steering effort is about 24 newton meters or 18 foot pounds of torque on the steering wheel. And at the smaller slip angle, where the self-aligning torque is maximum, more or less, we get a steering torque of 28 newton meters, or about 21 foot-pounds of torque. So, the steering gets lighter as you go from initial steering to uh, the point where you have maximum uh, grip. But the drop-off isn't super severe. So. You go from uh, 24.3, 28.9, let's say you have, well, we're in Excel, Niels, ratio. So the, 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 the 86% basically is the steering force you have when you're taking the corner at the maximum g-force versus when you just start steering and the, the, the forces are building up. So you get a drop in force as you approach the maximum uh, tire grip. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, it depends a lot on the tire, of course. This isn't very pronounced. A lot of the time uh, you would see this drop off a lot faster. So a lot of the time it's more pronounced and the loss of force feedback basically is greater as you approach the optimum slip angle here, the maximum g-force. Uh, right. I don't know if you went uh, cross-eyed or not, but this is uh, just a method to, to calculate the steering torque. To give you some idea, I measured my G25 years ago at about 2 newton meters, so it's about 14 times too weak. And the sim steering uh, system from Leo Bodnar is still not powerful enough to do this. It does about 14, 15 newton meters. So even that's not enough, and you see me sweat all the time in those videos, so gives you some appreciation of an unassisted steering rack with downforce and high speed, just how nasty that is. Thanks for watching, next time I'll do the, the brake pedal, uh, but I think I've sent you asleep now already, so that will be another video. Thanks a lot, and see you next time. Bye bye.